Vinod, making energy greener is one of the key topics here with Siemens Gas and Power. Now, I'll be honest, making energy greener means a lot of things to a lot of people. How do you explain it to the industry? Yeah, you know, let me start by just saying that making energy greener is all about having a holistic approach, right? So when you talk about energy, it means a lot of different things. And green also means a lot of different things, right? So a holistic approach for us is to make sure that we are looking at the intent, which is to go decarbonized as soon as possible, but do it in a way that is affordable to our consumers and reliable. So balancing security of supply mm -hmm. with the strong need for decarbonization. That's what the intent of this whole field is for us. And what we have done is we have kind of uh, created a radar that tries to show how you can get there. So we are here at present and right. we want to get into the future, which is really a decarbonized world. And the way to get there, we feel, is not a, it's not a, sh it's not like a overnight shift. It's not gonna happen tomorrow morning. Exactly, so when we get from here to the future where we wanna be for sure, what's the most pragmatic way to do that? And when we felt that there are steps you could take where we start with improving the efficiency of our existing footprint, our existing assets, do everything possible to make them cleaner, make them cheaper, make them more effective. Yep. And then we start shifting into another space where we can use these assets and combine them with new technologies to start providing a fuel to gas, a, a fuel shift where we can start going from conventional fuels like yep. LNG to cleaner fuels like hydrogen, right? And then eventually we start coming into the macro level technologies where we have aspects like sector coupling, where we can use energy to produce fuel that can then be used for more generation or mobility or transportation. Yep. We can look at also using excess energy to drive petrochemicals, business and so forth. The, the oil create pneumonia, exactly. food stocks for other industries, etc. Exactly. So, you know, for us it's, a, it's, it's not really a either or kind of a discussion, it's more of an and discussion. How do we make sure that our customers who have invested a lot of assets into setting up the current power generation portfolio, yep. how do we help them maximize their investments with those? At the same time, helping them also achieve their carbon neutral targets because all of our customers are, are, are also on an energy transition journey. I agree. Right. So, 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 so the whole point here is that we have a lot of current technologies we can apply right away. We have new business models. For example, we are looking to see how we can have a coal to gas shift. This is an example on coal to gas. In 2018, by shifting more of the conventional generation from coal to gas, yeah. 85 million tons of CO2 were avoided just in the just US moving, and China. Moving from coal to gas. Coal to gas. So just burning the coal plants or coal in the coal plants lesser because we, could, we had a lot of gas capacity and by running the gas turbines more, and a gas turbine is in general 50% more efficient, lower emissions, a, yeah. and, and so just by doing that, we were able to take out 85 to 95 million tons of CO2 last year. If you now start combining that with hydrogen firing, start putting in a mix of 20%, whatever into exactly. the, the turbines. Exactly, so we feel it could be somehow a lot more of a balanced approach. Uh -huh. We are absolutely committed to a zero carbon strategy. We believe that that is what the planet needs for sustainability. And all we are trying to do is now to say, given that being the goal, how do we find the most pragmatic, affordable, and reliable way to get there? No, and when I saw this yesterday morning, I was a lot of the work I do in the energy industry on technologies, and whatever. And, you know, yeah, we all want to be there. You know, we should have been there maybe a hundred years ago. Sure. Hindsight's a wonderful thing. Exactly. And yet you go out and you, as you say, there are still people burning coal, right? Likely or wrongly, but and, and the, the theme of the conference is uh, energy for prosperity. Yeah. And if I don't have energy in my country, yeah. and I have the only reserve I have, natural resources, coal, guess what? They're going to burn. So you need more efficient turbines, right. whatever. Right. But like, I've seen what you've been doing with the, the brownfield, yeah. even uh, upgrading existing 20-year-old gas turbines to ones that are far more efficient. Again, okay, you're still burning gas, but it's far more. So it's, it's I kind of go, it's a crawl, walk, run, but I like the thing of the increase the efficiency now, yeah. step into, because we're, again, we're not going to get the hydrogen 100% tomorrow morning. Exactly. 
would add in the sector public. Absolutely. And, and you know, it's, it's, a, it's a nice story. Yeah, and I think, you know, the, you mentioned uh, the Brownfield Engine Exchange. I think for me, this is really one of those things that if we can get a few more of them going. So we've had a few successes around the world. Uh, yeah, one a, in the US recently. One in the US, one in Europe, a few in Asia. And so what we see that it is becoming increasingly attractive to some customers who know that they can, they have to run their existing power plant for another 10 years or so. Yeah, the, right? the, the, and the lights, the politicians will agree because the lights, society, because the lights have to stay that's on. That's right, that's right. And so, but at the same time, they don't want to invest in a brand new power plant because a brand new power plant has got usually a life cycle of 30 years or 40 years. So this Brownfield engine exchange is a good, it's a good middle ground or an interim thing where you okay. don't replace the whole, you, you don't have to build a new power plant. You just take out the core part of the power plant, which is the turbo machinery, the gas turbine. And as you said, you take out a 20 year old gas turbine and you put in a new one and you get some massive improvements. So for example, the one example we talked about in the US, we were able to improve uh, efficiency of the turbine by approximately 4% points. Okay. We were able to increase power output by about 20 megawatts and we were able to bring down emissions by about 40%. So that, that's, that's straight off the bottom line or on the bottom line, right? Absolutely. And, and, and to quantify that a bit more, for a 500 megawatt power plant that is, uh, let's say, running at 85% utilization, right? if you're able to improve efficiency by 1% point, it reduces carbon dioxide emissions by 2.5% per year, which amounts to something like 37,000 tons of CO2. So when you talk about a 4% point improvement, you're talking about something in the range of 115,000 tons of CO2 reduction in that one power, power plant. So there is a lot we can do while we go on this way. And, and I think that it's our job as Siemens, and I love what you said before, it's not right or wrong. Different countries in their journey to prosperity have different boundary conditions. The situation in Norway is different from the situation in Egypt versus the situation in India versus Venezuela, for example. I'm picking, I'm pick, picking countries just as... But, uh, you know, in the ideal world, everybody be Norway, but we're, it's not. It doesn't work that way, right? So, so what we try to do is, you know, look at the state, the state of the economy, and, and we work with the uh, the, the government uh, authorities in those countries and try to come up with a plan jointly with them. So the, the Egypt uh, electrification strategy... The mega, was, the mega project, the mega project that, uh, that turned into the mega project, which, which is a mega project. Absolutely. That was uh, an excellent example of this. Similarly, we just recently signed an MOU with the government of Nigeria okay. for an electrification roadmap for them. So, so with Bolivia, for example. So what we're trying to do is we want to be a partner to our customers, both at the government level and utility level. And we want to make sure that we come to them with a range of options, and this is the range of options we have, and say, okay, for your specific situation, for your specific national uh, strategies, what combination works best for you? And I think that becomes a much more of a win-win kind of a conversation rather than more of a black and white, us but, and them. But, but when I saw this yesterday, I was kind of going, whatever your point of view is in terms of where you are in the food chain or in your in your journey, yeah. and whether you're back here, you go, I look at this point, I just keep running the power plant the way right. I used to, or it's, uh, we need to be carbon neutral now. Yes. You can use this to talk to the city people, and you're not, Absolutely. it's not that you're, they may not agree with everything, but at least you're showing it's a discussion. Right? It's a discussion, and you, everybody can see where they fit, Absolutely. and they can see that I don't, I, I don't have to go there tomorrow. I, I just can't, and, and, right. and you'll alienate them. But you, they can kind of go, okay, I can yes. crawl, walk, run. Exactly, crawl, walk, run. And you know, an, another good example of this is India. You know, so India has a lot of coal. Yeah. And they have a massive demand for energy that is growing. I was there a couple of years ago, and they've, 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 they've just electrified thousands of villages. Absolutely. So, so their, so their so energy supply is completely different to what I think of energy supply, right? Exactly. They, they didn't have one. They didn't have one. And then, and then at the same time, the Indian government is investing a lot on renewables, which yeah. I think is fantastic. At the same time, if we can do something there, and we are in discussions to see how we can help, 
if we can do something to help them improve the efficiency of their coal fleet, you know, you, and what we have done is a benchmark of uh, the coal fleet across different countries. So we've compared the coal fleets in India compared to Korea versus China, and we do see that there are opportunities where we can bring the Siemens technology together with the competencies we have in engineering, in design, in, in plant engineering and so forth, and manufacturing, to help a country like India bridge their story so that by the time they go to their renewable, strong portfolio, we also maximize the return for them and to society from the investments they have in coal. So I, I really and, like And, and you're reducing the, the, the emission, because some people would say, well, they should just turn yes. them off. And you know, yes. they could, but then no, you know, the, the, that has, there's no electricity, and that has totally other consequences for society and exactly. human rights and that. And, and. So it's, they're going to be there, so you might as well help them be more efficient. Absolutely. And, and, and again, but I know, I like the story. It's, um, Thank you. You know, you, it covers end to end. Uh, it's, it's a good one. And, and as we go forward, you know, we will, we will develop, we, we are spending a lot of time and money these days to further fill this out. And we will add a few more pieces because I think there is a huge opportunity base here. And, and, and the way we look at this is, it's a triangle. It's a triangle where on the one hand, we are all aligned to a zero carbon future. That's yeah. where we want to go. At the same time, we have to make sure that energy supply is reliable and secure so that prosperity can be achieved for the different economies around the world. And finally, I think there is a certain amount of collaboration, co-creation, joint development between the various stakeholders, being companies like us, like Siemens, or mainly manufacturers and equipment providers. Yep with customers from around the world who are the utilities, the ITPs, the governmental energy authorities, and finally, I would say, the governments themselves, and institutions like the World Energy Council. I think this is the triangle that has to work together, and so that when we do this in a, in a, in a collaborative way, in a, in, a, in a constructive way, it's coordinated. It's coordinated. I think we can make a very long uh, step forward. And, and chatting with some of your colleagues yesterday, you know, to be honest, that's the only way the whole sector coupling is going to work. Exactly. Because if you bring the best technology and you push hydrogen, and there's no other industry that's like going... Well, there's no market for it, then you're really in trouble. Yeah. You're, you're, yeah. and, and, and the world story of all the parts, right. I suppose, because what I like with this as well, um, it's not just, you know, Siemens has key pieces here, but it's almost an industry story, right? Yeah, it, it, it's, it's, it's an industry story. I like the way you said it. it's an industry story. And, and I think that, you know, as we, as we look into the future, when industries come together and really work together, there is another benefit, which is innovation happens. Yeah, agreed. Right? So there's a lot of stuff here that we don't even know which will emerge when industries come together. I think that the energy industry, with the automotive industry, with the transportation, the chemicals, huge potential for innovation. There's, there's, a, lot of, there's a lot of clever people out there and we don't know what we don't know, right? So Absolutely. someone will come up with something, oh, Absolutely. Well, if I join this because it's thinking outside the bubble. Exactly. And so I know it's, I know it's an often used uh, word, but I really think that this ecosystem, ecosystem of partners working together for a, you know, in an aligned manner for a, a, a clearly a cleaner future for this planet creates a lot of opportunity for prosperity, innovation, and also sustainability. No, and, and, and the, the, what do you call it, profit for good or whatever, yes. because... The, the, profit it, with it, the purpose, it, profit it, for good. Yeah, you know, because it, it, it does cost money to do this, but I, as I say, I like the, I like, I like the story. Thank you. Thank, Thank you for that. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Pleasure talking to you. Thank you. Great.